My name is Yasmin Lyons. I am an assistant professor of gynecologic oncology in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. I'm board certified in obstetrics and gynecology and board certified and fellowship trained in gynecologic oncology. By far, the biggest risk factor for cervical cancer is having the human papillomavirus or HPV. And so a lot of the risk factors come into contracting HPV infection. And that would be early onset sexual activity, having multiple sexual partners, having a partner with multiple sexual partners, or having other sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea, chlamydia, or herpes. There are some cervical cancers that are not related to HPV, and so having an immunocompromised um, status, so having HIV or a history of a transplant, as well as having lack of access to healthcare, and also being a smoker can increase your risk of getting cervical cancer. So signs and symptoms of cervical cancer include any type of abnormal bleeding, and that could be heavy bleeding during your period, bleeding in between periods, or bleeding after sex. Another symptom would be pelvic pain, any sort of um, pain during periods, in between periods, or just pain that won't go away is a symptom. Vaginal discharge is also a common symptom of cervical cancer that women should not ignore. The best way that women can prevent cervical cancer is by getting the HPV vaccine. Children can get the HPV vaccine starting at age nine, and women can get the HPV vaccine up until age 45. The way that we can detect cervical cancer early is by seeing patients for routine pelvic exams and pap smears. Um, so the pelvic exam is important because you need that every year where we examine the cervix and the uterus, tubes and ovaries, and then the pap smear is done every three to five years depending on age.